Hello team, I'm Night Six, and today we're going to focus on the fifth podcast, which is Troop Leading Procedures. Today I have with us a group of leaders from within the Knights Brigade, and one of the things we're going to talk about is how Troop Leading Procedures really, really are an empowering tool for a planning process at the direct leadership or company level leadership position. One thing I like about Troop Leading Procedures is it's a great way to not only direct soldiers and provide a, a planning tool and a supervising tool, but it also allows us to motivate, teach, develop, and really grow our leaders. The first step in the process is to receive the mission. So when I receive a mission, the first thing I'll do is back brief my commander to ensure I understand his intent, the concept of the operation, and his end state. Afterwards, he'll give me any further additional guidance or clarification as needed. Next, I'll use the planning factors of MET-TC, which stands for Mission, Enemy, Train and Weather, Troops, Time, and Civilian Considerations. So sometimes the commander, I may receive a Frago or a Warno that, has, that still lacks specific details while the, while the main order is being completed. However, by understanding the commander's intent and the concept of the operation two echelons above me, I can still take the necessary actions as a commander to prepare my soldiers' equipment ahead of time. The next step to the troop leading procedures is issue a warning order. A warning order outlines the received mission and contains as much details as possible. I use it to inform my subordinates of the unit's mission and give them the commander's timeline. When I issue the warno, I use the five paragraph op order format or the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. With this information, I can issue a warno to the rest of my team so they can prepare vehicles and equipment for movement while my peers and I develop a plan. Make a tentative plan is the third step of the troop leading procedures. A big part of making a tentative plan is mission analysis. As a platoon leader preparing my platoon for success, I take into account several factors when preparing them for operations. Big aspects for a composite truck company, which I'm a part of, is key avenues of approach as we oftentimes have to move large pieces of equipment. Another big part of it is troops available. We need to make sure our troops are ready and capable of operating the equipment so that they are successful in any operation they conduct. The fourth step in the troop leading procedures is to start the necessary movement. This can occur at any point in the troop leading procedure process. This allows us to empower our junior leaders to execute at their level the movement while the senior leaders plan to provide extended outreach and support to our NATO allies, such as in an exercise or a major movement. The fifth step of troop leading procedures is conducting a recon. Leaders and subordinates must weigh the advantages of conducting a recon. This will help us better visualize of our mission. It will also give us additional information that our higher headquarters did not capture on their initial order. As a platoon sergeant, the intelligence that I gather from the recon, I use it for my advantage in order for me to identify obstacles and anything that will prevent us from performing our job smoothly. Step six of the troop leading procedures, complete the plan. During this step, leaders expand their selected courses of action into completed op orders. They prepare overlays, complete sustainment, C2 requirements, and update the tentative plans based on the latest reconnaissance. They prepare briefings and other briefing materials needed to present the op orders directly to their subordinates. By utilizing the five paragraph op order format, this helped leaders explain all aspects of the operation, i.e. terrain, enemy, higher and adjacent friendly units, support, and command and control. This format also serves as a checklist to ensure that all relevant details of the operation are covered. Step seven, issue complete op order. The five paragraph op order covers situations, mission, execution, sustainment, and command and signal. As a leader, I want my soldiers to take these key points from the op order. The command intent, concept of operations, assigned tasks, and end state. The eighth and final step of the troop leading procedures is to supervise and refine the plan. Leaders continuously supervise and evaluate the plan during the entire process. This is done through inspections and rehearsals. The eight steps of the troop leading procedures are not rigid steps, they just require engaged leaders. When these steps occur, they allow the soldier maximum opportunity to plan and accomplish their mission. 
So team, why do you think I picked troop leading procedures for this uh, month's podcast? So I think that you chose the, the troop leading procedures, ma'am, because it's an important fundamental for any young leader as well as, you know, um, the senior leaders. Sorry, your level, what do you think is the most important step? I think it's very important uh, for the first step to receive the mission because without receiving the mission, you don't, actually don't have a mission. So receive the mission is, is just a very important step in the process. Um, I feel like the most important step of troop leading procedures is to make a tentative plan. Uh, soldiers understand the concept of the operation. I feel like that plays a big part in the mission being success as a whole. I believe that conducting a recon, especially for my level as a platoon sergeant, uh, that is where the rubber meets the road. That's where it starts. Well, I really appreciate everyone coming out today and participating in this podcast. Exercising and applying troop leading procedures is one more way that the 16th Sustainment Brigade sustains a strong Europe.